Hello and welcome to the History of the Silk Road. I'm Alicia Hill. I attend Great Basin College with Dr. Ethan Hockley. Our objective today is what were the Silk Roads during these time periods? First being pre-300 BCE, second 300 BCE to 600 CE, third 600 CE to 1200 CE, and the fourth 1200 CE to 1400 CE. Before 300 BCE, this is considered the trans-ecological age. By that I mean, step and zone trans-ecological relationships existed only, nothing from the east to the west. Horses were domesticated for trade. So trade would mean horses for pearls and gems, horses for silk, but mostly horses for food grains, etc. There was a secondary products revolution, and horses are the primary source of transportation, so very important to somebody, especially somebody that wants to travel. Purple dye is very important, especially over in the west. Monsoon winds are also discovered over in the west. Will be, they'll be actually very important, and you'll see why towards the end of our PowerPoint. Our second time period, Silk Road beginning at a golden age, 300 BCE to 600 CE. We see the Keen Empire is ending. Silk manufactured during this time and it becomes very popular. People in the West take notice. The Han Dynasty they start uh, becoming a major export of silk. And elitists seek this silk, only China can make at this time. There's a Great Wall built, and there are markets that are built along the Great Wall. Uh, it's great for trade, horses for grain and silk, and farmers markets are established. Um, these markets become very important because they create wealth along this Silk Road. In the West, we have the Roman Empire. We have Alexander the Great during this time. He expands the Roman Empire from, to India and Egypt. Um, and monsoon winds are used at this time to expand the empire as well. Parthia is at war with the Roman Empire. And centrally, the Kushan Empire begins, Kasatrapas are established and this is a new way to rule. There's king of kings, they create peace and wealth. It's indirect rule. They collect their taxes from the kings, not from the people, and they do not impose power. They let the kings rule still. Buddhism is the religion of the Kushan Empire and I should back up because Christianity is the religion of the Roman Empire. But Buddhism is very important to the Silk Roads because there is a Mahayana Buddhism that is spread along the Silk Road. Uh, there are these Buddhist temples built. They provide hospitality for travelers. They provide security, interpreters, mediators, record keeping services. Merchants end up giving generously to these Buddhist monks and these temples for their prayers and rituals and blessings. And in turn, there are more temples built which actually spreads the Silk Roads further, east and west. So during this time, we also see the Sui Dynasty in China develop. And the Roman Empire splits and moves from Rome to Constantinople. Justinian controls silk within his empire and sumptuary laws are seen at this time. The Byzantine Empire is wealthy but weak and at war with a Sassanid Empire. There is a silk sericulture that goes on at this time and Sogdians actually end up taking over the Kushan Empire. They keep trade going after the Kushans fall. There is no real empire. They keep the Silk Road alive, however. 
there are trading posts from China to Rome, and Persian silk is developed. This is unraveled silk from China. They don't actually have the means yet to make the silk. The Silk Road is transformed 600 CE to 1200 CE. During this time, we see the Tang Dynasty. They take on the purple. Only the government leaders wear this purple, and the ideas come from the West, so we see an enmeshing of ideas. After the Tang Dynasty, we see the Song Dynasty. Uh, Song does not like the trade, so they slow the trade. There's nationalism and Confucianism. Confucianism that is spread. In the West, Byzantine and Empire, Roman Empire, Christian religion dominates, and the Islamic religion expands and actually explodes at this time. The Umayyad Empire is established. Uh, they are Islamic primarily. The Abbasid Empire is established next. And there is the Battle of the Talus River. This is a very important thing. Abbasids defeated the Tang Dynasty. This spread Islam into Asia. There was a new idea of equality, new ideas, and wealth. Universities were spread. Science and math created. Chinese prisoners ended up building the city. And silk was produced everywhere at that time. After the secrets were spread. Sea routes and ports were established. Trade is made easier. Common goods are shipped. No longer is the Silk Road primarily on land, but it's found to be easier to be through the sea. We have the Age of Khan. This becomes a safe Silk Road. Genghis Khan conquers, expands commerce, creates safer routes, centralizes taxes, he encourages trade, creates more wealth, he conquered clans, and united the known world. He was intelligent and strategic, and after his death, his empire grew. This would be the Khan Empire that we see on the map. Creates a Mongol peace for some time. And the ideas of this area are enmeshed. Ortogs are Islamic administrators, and they are spread wherever needed. The Khans see a need, and they meet it. So that is my reference. Here are my bibliography pieces, and I hope you enjoy.